So hi everyone. Today I'm going to pre be presenting this paper. Uh, one second. Uh, this paper, CLAMP, uh, prompt based contrastive learning for a connecting language and animal pose. So this paper was published in CVP 2023. Uh, they use clip based method to estimate pose in animal. So first thing first, why animal pose? First thing, first question came into my mind. Why do we need to do animal pose? We can just use the same model in human pose estimation and it should work in animal pose too, because it's end of the day also estimating another key points in a different image. Well, what I found out after reading this paper is like um, in, in, in the world of animal, different animal has different structure, like here, like the goat has different structure here. Even if uh, the goat has like four legs, like pandas, they, still the structure is different. The, the point, like the key point for eyes are different in many sense so that's why we need a like, separate kind of model compared to human pose estimation because in human uh, the eyes are same the body structure are same for all humans so this is just one class so the human pose estimation model cannot work like, really well for animal pose estimation so what can work for animal pose because there are so many of them, so, and it's really hard to find a proper data set which will contain each and every animal existing in the world. So like, we need to figure out something which has the capability of generalizing uh, a scene or like, scenes pretty well. So to generalize scenes, like, one thing is pretty well, which is clip. Like, we've seen it. Like, uh, last month I presented about this paper so, so here the, like I'll also briefly go uh, uh, through again like, it has like two encoders text encoder and image encoders so it basically um, creates some matrices metrics and uh, maximizes the trends in a way that if they maximize the diagonal which allows them to have the zero shot learning uh, property which later can be used as uh, image classification model so this zero shot learning uh, property has uh, the ability to generalize a scene uh, better so in the case of animal where we do not have exact um, uh, we might not have exact image for each animal in this case this kind of approach can work pretty well, like uh, theoretically at least. So this is the architecture. Let's. I'll go to, again briefly. I'll, I'll go into a more in depth later part. But to like, explain briefly, let's say like let's not look at like what is what they're doing template and stuff. Like we'll explain it later. Uh, so there are again two things like clip. Like, a text encoder let's focus here like a text encoder and an image encoder and it creates uh, something called feature aware adaption and spatial aware ad adaption for pose estimation from clip original clip and using uh, these two uh, they finally come up with uh, pose estimation in this architecture uh, but uh, we'll go through in more in depth in the later part of the presentation. So like here, we have seen in clip, uh, we just give the text uh, of, uh, give the uh, title or something of an image directly. But here we are uh, giving a template plus notes or template plus right height, but template plus whatever. So why are we doing that? Uh, so this came from this paper, from a learning to prompt uh, for vision language models. In this paper, I'll not go into two details of this paper, but what they found out is 
instead of using just one um, heading for each individual uh, image, if we use an uh, array of the same array of description for same class and combine all of them, the accuracy of classifying that particular object uh, increases in the, in the case of clip. Like, like here, uh, we can see the when they just use a class the accuracy was 82.68 percent when they used f4 of a class it was 80 and the f4 of a class it was 86 but when they were combining all of them the accuracy was 91.83 so the trend or followed in more or less all data set like the caltech data set and flowers one or two uh, uh, more what it means is in general in all objects in the case of clip if we combine multiple uh ha multiple multiple uh, explanation of same uh object and combine them together for clip classification like it works better so uh, which is why they used uh, a template plus nodes and uh and everything else so here, so the so we now know why did they use this template. Then after adding template, they sent it to the text encoder of clip. Then they got the final, uh, the, not final, the uh, the embedding for each key point, like a nose, right hand, or right knee. Like each key point, they have the embedding from text encoder of clip. But uh, in pool estimation, so the um, uh, so in pool estimation, uh, the uh, key points are interrelated between themselves. So the nose will have some relationship with the right eye, the right eye will have some relationship with left eye, the right knee will have some relationship with uh, left knee. So to uh, get the relationship property in between key points, they added one more encoder, which is which they say a prompt encoder, which is basically a layer, a single layer uh, transformer, which uh, basically takes all the inputs, all the embedding from clip text encoder and uh, yeah, encode using those intrinsic uh, parameters of those key points and give the final embeddings uh, for, uh, for the text inputs. So we get the text input like this here. So yeah, and for uh, image encoder uh, here we have uh, the image encoder itself which is um, more the, in clip there are what, like two kind of image encoders one was resnet and another one was uh, vit so they used both in this uh, work and then the use one different thing uh, than clip so in here they use one uh, projector because like in clip we are uh, we were classifying one single image but here we have key points so we have to uh, generate the embedding for key points too like so from each image we need to uh, generate uh, the embeddings or the uh, uh, encoded values for each key point so we need to project so in this work they projected the embedded uh, values from the image encoder vit or resnet 50 uh, and projected into these key points and that's how they used image encoder like we will later to see how did they use how did they come up with this spatial adaption and uh, feature adaptions? 
I have explained. Yeah, we have seen this in order. So yeah, so we were talking about a, the difference between clip and this one is in clip we just had one purpose. We had to just classify images, but here we have pose estimation. Uh, we need to estimate the pose of uh, estimate key points of individual animal in the image. So to achieve this, so the uh, propose these two things, like uh, they propose a spatial aware process, which is basically uh, it tries to um, predict the uh, spatial uh, relationship in an image of with the text so it basically tries to um uh predict the points like uh, where some animal or where something is located so let's say the, the prompt was a goat so it tries to locate what the goat is located exactly and the feature aware process which is which helps to uh, uh, estimate the key points more precisely so if we explain in the normal terms yeah so how did they get this spatial aware adaption so um well uh, here so we have the text embedding from this prompt encoder and the uh, image embedding from image encoder after and uh, the projection is uh, in this uh, uh, projector module we uh, then uh, uh, take the uh, dot pro one second we take uh, in from this equation this is the output from the uh, image projector and this is the output from the encoder text encoder we take the dot product and then stack all of them okay, we we have like here like we have n number of embedding and n number of uh, uh, n number of so image embedding too so we uh, multiply each of them and stack all of them and then since we want to get something like this so the way they do it then they upsample this stack when after stacking all the uh, embeddings uh, from here the uh, dot product of both embeddings and uh, stacking if they upsample it to the size of the heat map as uh, to the heat map of that particular image and then they just take the MSC loss and train the spatial adaption part uh, for uh, to get the spatial awareness and for the later part uh, so here um, we have the key point features like we understood up to here. So, uh, we get the image and we get the image and the image is encoded into something and the encoded val value is projected into this dimension for so this dimension means for each key point that is an embedding and here we have uh, the template plus noise uh, noise and all the key points and through text prompt and uh, prompt encoder we have also encoding for um, the text uh, input so then uh, like clip uh, they take the dot product of each uh, input from the text embedding and image embedding and then uh, like also clip they maximize in diagonal so 
uh, like clipped also the, this uh, portion this entry is going to be the right entry for uh, for this embedding and this embedding so for the first entry uh, this portion is right for the second entry this portion is uh, this entry is right for the third and uh, third entry or maybe this one is right if there was a third and like if we uh, maximize the diagonal so uh, the feature extraction part can learn uh, the contrastive uh, property of clip and also it, in a way it can also learn the, the zero shot property or the feature property of like a, a in general clip models so this is the uh, basic idea of how the feature aware adaption works and then um okay so here, after getting this spatial uh, maps, spatial web maps, we can get some score map, uh, which uh, Uh, for final post prediction, uh, final key point detection. So they um, take the score map from the spatial aware adaption module, so, which is um, basically a heat map like thing. So they take the score map and the image embedding from the original image encoder like VIT uh, not VIT but just VIT or ResNet 50 and they concatenate both score map and uh, this embedding and they uh, feed it to a key point detector and finally uh, predict these key points so for uh, uh, the, the output of the key point predictor was a heat map and they also use MEC loss with the original the ground truth heat map and the predicted heat map and uh, train the network so, so finally the loss for everything would be looking like this the outbreak is the final one where they uh, take the MEC loss from for the ground truth uh, heat map from uh, for each image and the uh, predicted heat map from the model. And second one is for the spatial loss where they get the stack of the image and the stack of the stack of the uh, uh, embeddings and try to get the spatial features and <coughs> MEC loss with the, again, ground truth heat map. And the, the last one is the contrastive, uh, contrastive learning loss the way they train clips of the maximize the diagonal so yeah, uh, they train the model based on these three laws and these are the results they have done so this uh, this is the result for the supervised case where they trained all the images the, the training was done in a supervised fashion so but there was all classes available in the training and testing and this one was from the few shot learning uh, technique and this one i guess from the zero shot so the general trend is like um their method works best uh, more or less in all settings in supervised setting also their method was the best in terms of all scores almost uh, and for future learning too 
uh, their method was at the best for among the all feature uh, learning methods and zero shot two they are the best they are the selector and and this is also another experiment on that another data set there in that data set they are the best so here and for the ablation study they showed what are the effect of the each modules so the like it's shown in the table um, as they were adding the module the ap was increasing so yeah so if you add more module things is better so yeah that was it for me so if you guys have any questions just let me know thank you Thank you.